Chapter 9 The End of the Tale of the Hard Nut On the third evening, the lights had been lit in the Stalbum house when the judge returned to finish his story. Drosselmeyer and the astronomer searched for fifteen years without coming across the nut Krakatuk. I could spend four weeks telling you children all about the places they went and the strangest things they saw, but I will just say that Drosselmeyer is, in his deep sorrow and disappointment, began to feel a longing for his beloved home city of Nuremberg. A particularly nasty attack hit him when he was smoking his pipe with his friend the astronomer in the middle of some great forest in Asia, and suddenly he cried, Oh, beautiful, beautiful Nuremberg, my beautiful hometown Nuremberg, whom I have not seen for so long, though I've traveled to London, Paris, and all sorts of places. They cannot fill my heart, and I must always ask of you, O oh, beautiful city of Nuremberg, with your lovely houses and their windows. Drosselmeyer's cries were so sorrowful that the astronomer felt deep compassion for him, and he began to cry and wail as well. In fact, his cries were so loud that they could be heard through a sizable portion of Asia. Then he wiped his eyes and said, Esteemed colleague, instead of sitting here pining way over Nuremberg, why don't we go to Nuremberg? After all, it doesn't matter where we search for that cursed nut. True, Drosselmeyer said. He brightened up a little. They both knocked the ashes out of their pipes and straightway headed for the middle of Nuremberg. No sooner they had arrived, Drosselmeyer went to see his cousin, the doll maker, painter, and gilder, Christoph Zagrius Drosselmeyer, whom he had not seen in many years. The clockmaker told him all about Princess Pillarpet, the Lady Mouse Rinks, and the Nut Krakatuk. The doll maker clapped his hands in amazement and said, What a marvelous story! Drosselmeyer further relayed his adventures of how he spent two years with the King of Dates, how the Prince of Almonds had disdainfully rejected him, how his search at the Society of Natural Science in Squirrelton had yielded nothing, and how he failed everywhere to find even a trace of the Nut Krakatuk. Through the story, Christoph Zacharias frequently snapped his fingers and turned around on one foot. Finally, he exclaimed, "'Well, that'd be the devil, wouldn't it?' and threw his hat and wig into the air. He gave the clockmaker a hug and said, "'Cousin, cousin, all your troubles are over, because, unless all the world has conspired to deceive me, I own the nut, Krakatuk!' He immediately brought out a box from which pulled a gilded nut of moderate size. "'Behold,' he said, Many years ago, a nut seller with a bag of nuts came into town around Christmas time. He got into a fight with a local nut seller who did not think he had any right selling nuts here, right outside my shop, and had to set his bag down. Then a heavily loaded cart drove over it and broke all the nuts except one. The stranger offered it to me with the honest smile for a twenty from a seventeen twenty. Strangely enough, that's just the coin I found when I checked my pocket. So. I bought it and gilded it without really knowing why I paid so much for it, or why I wanted it so badly. Any doubt that the nut was not really Krakatuk was soon lifted when the astronomer scraped off the gold gilding and found the word Krakatuk engraved in Chinese characters. The joy of the travelers was immense, and his cousin was the happiest man under the sun when Drosselmeyer told him that his fortune was made, for he would soon receive a handsome pension and plenty of gold for gilding. Both wizard and astronomer had just put on their nightcaps and were ready to go to bed, and the latter said, My esteemed colleague, good fortune never comes but in packs. Not only have we found the nut Krakatuk, but also the young man to break it and present the princess with the core of beauty. No, I cannot sleep now, he said. I must draw up this young man's horse god this very night. With that, he tore off his nightcap and began at once to observe the stars. Christoph Zechariah's son was a handsome boy who had never shaved and had never worn boots. In his early childhood he had been a jumping jack for a few Christmases, but there was no trace of that now, as his father had taught him how to be a proper gentleman. During the Christmas season, which was now, he wore a red coat trimmed in gold, a sword, a hat carried under his arm, and an excellent wig. Thus. He stood splendidly in his father's shop and grandly cracked nuts for young girls, and for this reason they had nicknamed him Nutcracker. Next morning the astronomer gave the wizard a hug and said, Here he is! We have him! Now, there are two things we must not ignore. 
First, you must make your slender nephew a sturdy wooden tail that attaches under the jawbones so that his jaw can be firmly shut therewith. And then we must not reveal we have the young man who will crack the nut when we arrive at the palace, but instead he must wait for some time to reveal himself that I have read in the horoscope that after a few young men had broken their teeth on Krakatuk, the king will promise the kingdom and the hand of the princess in marriage to whoever can crack the nut open and restore the princess's beauty. Edgar was pleased to have a son marry the princess and become prince and later king, so he gave him up to the travelers. The little wooden tail Drosselmeyer attached to his hopeful young nephew's head worked so well that he was able to crack the hardest of peach pits. Drosselmeyer and astronomer reported to the palace that they found the nut Krakatuk, and the palace immediately issued requests for young men who might break the nut. Many arrived to try their own sturdy teeth on the nut and restore the princess, including a few princes. Our two travelers were considerably startled when they saw the princess. Her shriveled body, with its tiny hands and feet, could hardly carry her enormous head. The ugliness of her face was enhanced by a cotton-white beard that had sprouted around her mouth and on her chin. Everything happened exactly as the astronomer predicted. Young men with shoes on their feet and peach fuzz on their faces bit down on the nut Krakatuk and only got a few broken teeth and a sore jaw for their troubles without helping the princess in the slightest. Every young man who had injured himself thus would be carried away half-fainting by a specifically appointed dentist. Many could be heard sighing, That was a hard nut. The king, now fearing that his daughter might never be restored, promised the kingdom and the princess to whoever could crack the nut. At that moment, young Drosselmeyer stepped out and asked if he could try and crack the nut. None of the other young men had caught the princess's eye the way young Drosselmeyer had. She put her little hands over her heart and sighed. Oh, let this be the one who breaks the nut and becomes my husband. After paying his respects to the king, queen, and princess, the latter specifically, especially politely, he took the nut from the grand master of ceremonies. He put in his mouth and tugged at the tail Drosselmeyer had made for him, and crack, crack. The shell broke into many pieces. The young man removed the fibers from the core of the nut, closed his eyes, gave it to the princess, and began his seven steps backward. The princess swallowed the core, and, oh, wonders, an angelically beautiful young lady stood before them with a face of lily white and rose red, eyes like azure, and hair like curled strands of gold. Trumpets and drums mingled with the cheers of the people. The king and his court danced on one leg as they had the day of the princess's birth, and the queen had been revived with strong-smelling perfumes because she had fainted from happiness. The commotion did not at all ruffle young Drosselmeyer, who was just taking his seventh and last step. But then, who should pop out of a crack in the floor but Lady Mousewinks, ugly, squeaking and squealing, and right under the young man's heel. This caused him to stumble so that he almost fell. Oh, calamity! The boy was instantly as hideous as Princess Pelopet had been moments ago. His shriveled body could hardly hold up his ugly head with its protruding green eyes and hideously wide smile. Instead of the little tail the clockmaker had made from, a small wooden cloak hung from his shoulders so that he had controlled his jaw. The clockmaker and astronomer were beside themselves with horror. Then they saw Lady Mouserinx roll onto the floor. Her malice had not gone unavenged, for the pointed heel of young Drosselmeyer's shoe had hit her sharply and fatally in the neck. The fear of death had seized her, for she squeaked and squealed piteously. Oh, Krakatuk, hard nut, now I must die. Hee, pee, pee, and not crack your young man, you too will die. My seven-crowned son will avenge my death and take you from your living breath. O oh, life so vibrant and red, I squeak. With that, the Mouse Queen died and promptly carried to the royal furnace for disposal. In the heat of the moment, everyone had forgotten the young Drosselmeyer, but the princess reminded the king of his promise, and he immediately ordered that the young man be brought before them. But upon seeing how hideous the unfortunate boy had become, the princess held her hands over her face and cried, Take him away! Take that horrible nutcracker away! 
The chamberlain seized him by the shoulders and threw him out the door. The king was furious that someone had tried to give him a nutcracker for his son-in-law and blamed everything on the clockmaker and astronomer, whom he had banished forever. None of these developments had been in the horoscope taken at Nuremberg, but the astronomer was not deterred from reading the stars again, which now revealed that the young Drosselmeyer would become a prince and a king despite his ugliness. Furthermore, he could lift the curse put upon him if he could defeat the seven-headed mouse born to Lady Mousewinks after the death of her seven sons, and find a lady who would love him despite his looks. You may have seen young Drosselmeyer in his father's shop in Nuremberg around Christmas time, and now you know that he is not just a nutcracker, but also a prince. And now you know the tale of the hard nut. Why people say that was a hard nut to crack and how the Nutcracker became so ugly. Thus, the judge ended his story, where he thought that the Princess Perlipat was a cruel, ungrateful brat, and Fred said that if the Nutcracker was worth anything, he would quickly defeat the Mouse King and get restored to his former self again.